The Pat Kenny Show on News Talk with Matter Private Network. During current restrictions, don't ignore your health concerns. Our expert team is ready to help. Now, Jerry the Monk Hutch was arrested yesterday near Fungarola on the Costa del Sol. Uh, the leading gangland criminal who's been at the centre of the bitter Kinnan and Hutch feud is now awaiting extradition back to Ireland. Crime correspondent with the Irish Daily Star, Michael O'Toole, uh, joins me now. Mick, good morning and welcome. Morning, Pat. Now, t- tell us as much as we know about uh, how he was found and uh, detained. It'll be a short interview. It, 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 details are very sketchy. We do, we, we, we look, we were, we understand he was arrested yesterday in Puen Hirola, uh, near Malaga on the Costa del Sol. He has been in, uh, on the run, I suppose, since April. I've just discovered in the last 20 minutes that uh, a, a special unit of the Guardia Civil was sent from Madrid. They're called UCO and they are in charge of uh, dealing with uh, fugitives. So that would be an ind- a strong indication as I was briefed last night that this was an intelligence-led operation. In other words, there were two ways that he could have been caught. Firstly, in a routine, something like a traffic stop and his name pings on the national computer or else it was a targeted operation. Now, the fact that those officers were sent from Madrid would be very, obviously a very, very, very strong indication that this was a, an intelligence-led operation and that they had good info as to where he was. So he is now in custody in, in, in uh, Fuengarola Guardia Civil Station and this is the start of the process of extradition for him. Yeah, and uh, it was suggested by uh, your uh, crime reporting colleague Paul Williams uh, this morning that he will fight that tooth and nail. He won't uh, go readily. He won't say, OK, it's a fair cop, uh, bring me back to Ireland. So it's likely to be protracted. Um, the European arrest warrant you mentioned was uh, issued in April. And obviously, when these kind of warrants are issued, police forces around Europe do take them terribly seriously. Oh, very much so. The the European arrest warrant is, has been extremely successful. If you think back, Pat, to the 70s, 80s, maybe probably even early 90s, extradition, even between, from south, the, the Republic up to the north was fraught with difficulties. So the EAW has been tremendously uh, successful. Um, and, you know, it does really open the doors. I think Paul Williams is right. I mean, I was speaking to a senior investigator last night who said uh, the monk would be a fool not to fight this because once he comes over here he'll be brought straight to the special criminal court he'll be charged and he'll be put in custody and it's very very likely he'll get bail he so his one chance effectively to stop this whole judicial protest process is to fight it in spain now look it's extremely unlikely he will win but he has the right to do it now if he doesn't uh, fight it he could be back in ireland within three or four weeks but i uh, the indications are he'd be a foolish man not to fight it now, he has been at large, I suppose, uh, ever since everything went wrong in that uh, attack at the Regency uh, for him. And he's lost family members in the meantime in that Kinnahan Hodge flu- feud. Do we know anything of his movements over the last five years? Oh, yeah, we do. Um, the I, I did a story uh, actually on the anniversary of the um, Regency, which is on the 5th of February, saying that the Guardi had requested... Uh, the DPP haven't charged and then later emerged. I think Williams broke that the DPP had charged him. So the EA, a European arrest warrant was issued. But within days of that, he was in Lanzarote at the time and somehow he got wind of it, maybe six cents or whatever. And he fled Lanzarote. He, he has been living there for quite some time. So he fled Lanzarote. Now, there was speculation. Some people were talking about him going to Africa or Brazil because of, you know, the extradition stuff. Guards I was speaking to were thinking it was more likely he was... One said, look, he's probably still close to home around Spain. Well, that proved right, to be fair to him. But, you know, he has been moving but from 2015 when, when they tried to kill him in Lanzarote. He has been moving between Lanzarote, mainland Spain, Turkey, Belgium. I know he was spotted and uh, Holland. So he has been quite peripatetic. He's been moving around a lot, not because the guards have been after him, but principally because the Kinahan gang have been after him trying to kill him. So, you know, I've always said he has two problems, the guards who want to arrest him and the Kinahans who want to kill him. So it looks as if at this stage the guards got him first. Now, the charges he may face uh, when he comes back, I mean, we all saw what happened at the Regency Hotel. Um, it is not thought that he was a gunman. So what are the, the, the nature of the charges that, what is the nature of the charges that he is facing? Well, we know for a fact because under the European arrest warrant, you can't be uh, arrested for questioning. So the guards can't say, look, we want to question Jerry Hutch about this murder. It has to be for the purpose of charge. 
So the guards have been given authorization by the director of public prosecutions to charge Mr. Hutch with murder. He is to be charged. He has effectively been already, you know, the, the process has started. The DPP has decided he will face trial for the murder of David Byrne at the Regency Airport Hotel attack on the 5th of February 2016. Now, you know, it's it's all about common cause or common design. So it's going to be before the Special Criminal Court because we know four people uh, are already charged in relation to the murder before the Special Criminal Court. One man is charged with murder itself and three are charged with uh, connected offences. So, you know, the case will be that he was involved as part of this common design to murder uh, Mr. Byrne well, uh, and various other people who were targeted. We know that really the Regency wasn't really about killing David Byrne, it was about killing Daniel Kennehan and they came very close to that. But he will be charged with murder and uh, it'll say it'll be a bit of a blockbuster trial. And finally, what do you think the reaction in the Kinahan faction will be to the arrest of uh, Jerry Hutch? Because an awful lot of blood has been spilt and clearly there are people who would still want to avenge those killings. Uh, if I'm being honest, I don't think it'll affect the, the Kenhins that much. There is, I mean, I reported in this a few weeks ago, there is something of a, a split within the cartel. Daniel Kennan himself, we all know he's involved in trying to make himself, you know, the main man in boxing. So he's doing a bit of sports washing. And our information was, and if you think about it, the last murder was in the feud was in January 2018. So Kennan, we're told, doesn't want any more killings because every time there's a killing or an attempted killing, the pressure is put firmly on him and that's the last thing he wants. But there are other people, particularly close associates of David Byrne, who want every person they believe was involved in this murder dead. And they've ident- they have actually identified 12 people. There were six people involved in it centrally. The three men who dressed up as guards, the man and one, the, the two people, including the, the man who dressed up as a woman and then the driver, the getaway driver. So that's six. But there were 12 they have identified, and I think Gardy would probably agree, there's probably about 12 people uh, on the Kinahan's list over this. So uh, I don't think it's over at all yet, Pat. Michael O'Toole, crime correspondent of the Irish Daily Star, thank you very much for joining us. 